All right, we've hit some red alert time. DK Oz has once again built themselves into a trap. Welcome back to Echo Ridge. Today, we need to go out and find some water because our primary tank is running a little bit low. We do have a couple of small backups, but these are mostly being used for all of our mush bars. Which also reminds me that we need to continue to work on the mush bar to mush fry conversion. And I'm not sure if the solution is just to add another cook, because right now the majority of what people are eating is just mush bar. We're also going to continue to expand our incubation efforts and make sure that we're going to be ready for another hatch stable when the time comes. But it's still going to be several cycles before we hit that maximum amount of egg critters. We're also going to start making our way over to this geyser. I'm hoping it's the saltwater one but it could also be this one here. We'll find out soon enough. Our Cycle 24 printing pod is here without much fanfare. I think I am going to start looking for that cook. So for now, we'll just reject everything. Because remember, we're still trying not to take any of the care packages that come out of the printing pod just to be able to force as much pain and punishment onto myself as possible. Speaking of dupes, we have a couple more skill points ready for assignment. In Dorito's case, we're going to add Critter Ranching 1, make sure they have their wonderful hat and now that gives us two ranchers which is going to be a big help making sure these eggs are continuously lullabied i was considering giving eilart astronomy but that's when i learned something new astronomy doesn't actually give you plus two to science like every other research skill it's the only one that doesn't it does give you access to the telescope and the mission control station but those things are less important and i don't necessarily want to throw them into applied sciences because of the increased morale cost. I wonder if it'd be possible if I could make a nature reserve here in this center corridor. A plus six to morale would really help, and then I wouldn't mind adding some additional skills. In Eric's case though, we can easily add improved carrying one. Because it's a tier one skill, and they have an interest in it, it means this is a zero net change, as far as current morale and the total morale need. I suppose it's not so bad. This third tier is gonna increase Eilart's morale need by three, for a total of six and the morale is going to be hovering around a 10. So we'll go ahead and give them applied sciences research and that way they can knock out research a little bit faster with the plus two to science. It also won't be so bad once Gave Up finally finishes working on this sculpting block. Unfortunately right now they're working here in the micro musher and oh my goodness we have three idlers again. Let's give Give Up a break and have them go work on the sculpting block. Somebody else can take over micro musher duties. Also on the skill front, we're actually waiting for our digger to get super duper hard digging to be able to get into here because there's a bunch of obsidian sort of blocking our way. And DK Oz is close and I think we're going to go ahead and skill scrub them, which yeah, they're going to lose the improved construction. So when they do finally level up, we'll be able to get three total points into digging. I just realized all this is fresh water as well. Everything on top is the salt water. Which, by the way, we're still waiting for the saltwater geyser to stifle itself. So we're going to need to be very careful around this sand here. And along with this, it'd probably be good to start purifying all this polluted water. We do have access to the deodorizer, so if I move this battery, I can put a couple of deodorizers in here and then open it up just large enough for dupes to be able to get in here, put in a pump, and then we can start streaming it directly over to this water sieve. Or just put in another water sieve up here. Mr. DK Oz to the skill scrubber, please. Mr. DK Oz to the skill scrubber. And our newest hatchling has just been delivered to the stable. We're up to four in cycle 25, not too shabby. And also in some of our digging up here, we've discovered some beautiful sedimentary rock. So we've started loading up these critter feeders. Hopefully we can start churning out stone hatchlings instead of sage hatchlings because based on how much dirt they've been eating, right now Susan has a 60% chance to lay a sage hatchling egg. It's not too big of a deal, but I'd prefer not to have to eat our 170 tons worth of dirt. DK Oz finished their skill scrubbing, so now the colony finally has someone who can do super duper hard digging. And with that being a tier 3 skill though, you can see we have DK Oz's morale to morale need ratio a little higher than what I like to see. Because for some reason, Gave Up does not want to work on this sculpting block. I'm starting to wonder that their aesthetic design skill that they got for free is sort of worthless without the ability to actually produce the artwork, which may be unlocked with art fundamentals. And yeah, when we go over to Aaron's under the sculpting block, you can see it appears that no one in the colony has the required skill. Not a big deal, we'll just wait for Gave Up to level up again, and then we'll put them into art fundamentals. Found a little bit more water under the supply teleporter input, which is kind of weird. There's four tiles of water here, two tiles of water here, but then right next to it is a bunch of salt water. 
I suppose we can use some creative digging and make a pull for this. That ought to be good. Okay, this does not look like a good situation. Let's move some of these duplicates out. I just need to stop doing multi-tier digging. The dupes always want to get themselves in trouble. Just like this. Instead of DK Oz jumping down, they decided to jump up. I don't like seeing empty incubators. It makes me really nervous. Unfortunately, with only four hatches, we're still at that point where we're not going to have continuous eggs flowing. But I'll feel much better when we do. In fact, we're already going to start setting up the secondary stable. Well, folks, it's not a water geyser. It's a carbon dioxide vent. Not helpful. But in our digging, we did discover another geyser up here. The deodorizers are doing a decent job, although there is a little bit of polluted oxygen that managed to make their way past. Of course, that polluted oxygen could be coming from all these bottles of polluted water that have been sitting here for a while. So we're going to put a bottle emptier here so we can dump all that polluted water in here. Then we're going to add a liquid pump and pump it all right over to our bathroom setup. Now, I would never do this long term, but for temporary uses, it will work. And we don't have to worry about clogging up the bathrooms because these are 50-50 splits. The toilets will still be able to drain, as will the sinks, and we'll be purifying all of that water and turning it into oxygen. Of course, it might get backed up here, though. Maybe we should prioritize this line to be used for the oxygen, which we'll be able to do with another bridge. Again, I'm not in love with this idea, but it'll save us from having to build another water sieve. Gave up has finally earned another skill point, and now they'll finally be able to actually sculpt on this block. So I suppose the only thing you can do when the game gives you aesthetic design is analyze artifacts and use the clothing refashionator. I guess I kind of assumed that these tier 2 skills included everything from the skills before them. But instead, you need those specific skills. For instance, if a dupe only had grilling 2 but didn't have grilling, they wouldn't be able to use the electric grill. Learn something new every day. And gave up is now finished with the block. We got a nice little lunar slice. But more importantly, oh, we still don't have a great haul. The great haul requires a decor item of plus 20 decor. This lunar slice only has a decor of 15. All right, it looks like we're gonna go ahead and get fine art so we can unlock the large sculpting block. I can't believe we're about to do this. I'm actually gonna be taking a mouth breathing dupe. Otto here is good at tidying, cooking, and operating, and they have quick learning. We need somebody who can do the cooking to help Eric out a little bit. I am not excited about mouth breather because if you remember, these two gas pumps are only able to provide oxygen for 10 duplicants. Adding Otto is basically going to put us at 10 duplicants because they breathe enough for two dupes. So we may have to expand this as well. Welcome to the colony, Lindsay Grossman. The polluted water conversion is going well. It's all successfully being sent to the water sieve and all that water is being sent to the spawn. And you'll notice it's no longer draining from this water pool, which it's a good thing because we're running out of water up here because this line here is being prioritized. On that note, We've got our pliers back. In the most recent update, Clay has made the disconnect tool a part of the base game. So now I don't have to feel guilty about using the tool in the achievement run. Our new and improved kitchen setup is in. In this way, Lindsay and Eric can both cook at the same time. And I'm happy to report it looks like Eric got the new electric grill. They told Lindsay they had to earn their chops on the old one. We also added a little bit of automation in the form of these duplicate motion sensors. Now this light bulb will only be on when somebody's cooking. Same goes for this side, which is going to help save just a little bit of power. Well, if there's ever a time we get caught up on food and we don't have a bunch of dupes always having to work in here. But already we're up to 16,000 calories worth of mush fry. So now not only are dupes not losing morale by eating mush bars, we're also getting the extra 250 calories for turning it into mush fry. And somehow we've gotten a little bit of food poisoning into our cooking system, which means one of our water pools has germs in it. Actually, it was probably from us dumping all the pee water into here and then the dupes transferring the bottles over. Oh yeah, now this pitcher pump has some germs on it. Time to do a little disinfecting. Oh, it's even in our kitchen. So in the business of extending our hatch stable, we're actually going to use the old door and tile trick to leave all of the hatches over here. I need to do this because I need to open this wall to be able to extend it. And once I do, I don't want the hatches burrowing themselves in here. If you let your hatches burrow, they'll no longer be inside the stable, which means their grooming could be delayed. And then if their grooming is delayed, that means their reproduction will be delayed. And then before you know it, we miss out on carnivore. No, thank you. Look at all this beautiful sand up here. 
Not to mention the fact when we finally get into using the desalinator, we're going to start being able to crush all this salt, getting some sand from it, and we're also going to get the wonderful little salt shakers. Speaking of which, we finally have a beautiful O Cupid, My Cupid statue, which has now turned this back into a great hall. So I'm feeling a lot better about the morale now. All right, I think it's time to do some spawn maintenance. We have a couple of objectives. First, you'll notice this oxygen is coming out at minus 40 degrees. I was thinking that the heat being generated by the spawn would eventually overtake some of this area. Well, apparently I was wrong. In fact, now we're starting to spread that really cold temperature throughout the main part of our base. And right now, it's not a big deal, but we almost have locavore unlocked. So another 40,000 calories, and we're going to start being able to plant some mealwoods. And we'll need to make sure the base isn't too cold before that happens. So step one, I think, is going to put some insulated tiles in here. And hopefully by doing this, we're able to drip in some of the chill. And step two is going to be adding another gas pump. I think the gas pump would do well right here. That way we have an easier way to get the second pipe out. Look at this, I completely missed it, but both of our incubators are full which means it's time to add another incubator. All right, we've hit some red alert time. DK Oz has once again built themselves into a trap, as long as they don't get the urge to pee. On the good news front, we found a saltwater geyser over here. So now we have this geyser and this geyser, but these both produce at 95C. I want to find the cool salt slush geyser. That way we don't have to deal with 95 degree temps, because we're not even close to being able to wear suits. Speaking of which, we have no thimble reed or Dracos. Hopefully, there will either be some Dracos or some Thimble Reed on the planetoid connected by our teleporters. We're also going to have to worry about power on this. I think we're actually going to have to research and upgrade all this to our conductive wire as well. Adding another pump is going to put this line over a thousand watts. I was really enjoying the extra dupe labor from not having to do research. When we dug over here to get access to this additional water, we revealed a little bit more of the map, and that's when we discovered we have bees. And it's great too because all of this is uranium ore. So these bees are going to be collecting it into this hive for a very, very long time. Because if you didn't know, it takes you actually revealing the beta hive for the bees to actually start collecting. So take note, it's cycle 31 and we have 14 kilos worth of enriched uranium. Have fun, wonderful little betas. Hatchling number five has been dropped off. And unfortunately, that's the limit of this stable. So we need to prioritize this a bit faster. Apparently, we unlocked another... Oh, yes. Locavore. Bye-bye, mush fries. We're almost done extending this ranch. Now we're just going to make sure it's small enough to be a stable. Because when it's larger than 96 tiles, in this case it's 103, you can't use the grooming station. Which means we're not grooming any of these critters. In the process of doing that, we're going to put all of our tiles down, which is going to raise all this salt water up. So we put one tile here, that way the salt water doesn't spill all over our base. Now the dupes are going to get a little bit of the soggy socks, but they're going to have to deal with it. All the salt water has been mopped up, and our stable's finally back to normal, and our wonderful little hatchlings here are no longer overcrowded. We've also started putting in planter boxes. Now normally it only takes five mealwood plants to feed a dupe. Unfortunately we're playing on max difficulty, which means it takes ten mealwoods to feed one dupe. I also normally like to separate them based on how many duplicates they're feeding, but I don't think we're going to have enough room because at nine dupes, we're going to need 90 millwood plants. 90. Yeah, we're still going to separate them. So just by looking at this, we're going to be able to see this is enough to feed three duplicates. Now we're already starting to run out of millwood seeds, so we're going around and actually digging up some of the wild planted ones. And if you're wondering what we're actually going to be eating using the mill lice, it's not going to be pickled meal. Pickled meal is good because it has a great spoil time of 32 cycles. But lice loaf, although it has a much lower spoil time, turns that 1200 calories worth of meal lice into 1700. Which now that I think of it, actually changes our mealwood math. The mealwood plant itself yields 600 calories worth of meal lice every three cycles. So we can reduce that and say every cycle it gives us 200 calories. Hence the reason why five plants would give you a thousand calories, which makes then five the number of plants it takes to feed one dupe. On Hungry Boy mode, it would be 10. But by turning that meal lice into lice loaf, we're actually getting a bonus 500 calories. To start the math, we're going to have to figure out how many lice loaves every duplicant needs. And considering these Hungry Boy dupes eat 2,000 calories per cycle, we take 2,000 divided by 1,700, and we're given 1.176, we'll round it up to 1.18. So now we know we need 1.18 lice loaves per cycle per dupe. 
Which means now we just have to figure out how many millwoods it takes to get 1.18 lice loaves. So we can take that same 1.18 and multiply it times its ingredients. So 1.18 times the 1200 calories worth of meal lice equals 1416 calories. Now that we know how much meal lice we need, we can then figure out how many millwoods we're gonna need per dupe. Well, we've already figured out that we get 200 calories worth of meal lice per cycle, so we can divide the 1,416 calories by 200, and we're given 7.08 plants to support one duplicate on lice loaf, which means my wonderful little rows here are gonna have to change a little bit. So now, instead of this only being three duplicates worth of food, it's actually four. Well, a little bit more, because we can't exactly plant 7.08 mealwoods, so we went ahead and rounded to eight mealwoods per dupe. Well, looky, looky what we found. It's our beautiful cool salt slush geyser, and it erupts at minus 10 C, which would still be too cold to desalinate it, because the minus 10 degrees would go into the desalinator, and when it converted it over water, it would crack the pipes. So we either need to heat this water up or mix it with water that is not quite as cold. I'm kind of liking this. Look at this. It's our first stone hatchling egg. Good job, little buddies. Now the disadvantage is we're gonna have to watch those stables a lot closer because we're not sure which eggs they're gonna be producing. And until we have a mechatronics engineer, we have to manually pull them out to put them in these incubators. Not a big deal, but we're gonna have to keep one open for hatchling eggs now and one open for stone hatchling eggs. Okay, here's the general plan. We're gonna open up this cool salt slush geyser and we're gonna dig a shaft all the way down here. And for now, we'll put one liquid pump here and all that cold brine is gonna mix with this salt water so it shouldn't be too cold. Now, eventually there won't be any of this warm salt water left. It'll just be the cold brine and then we'll have to deal with the minus 10 degrees then. But that's where I'm thinking we could also continue this further down to allow it to mix with this salt water geyser because this one's erupting at 95C. And when you mix 95C with minus 10, you get about 42 and a half degrees. Well, depending on how much each geyser is producing. Unless, of course, I pumped all that water up and then I can just use a separate pump here and that way we don't have some huge obnoxious tank, which that might be a good idea because space is sort of at a premium. Okay, plan revision. This is what our tank's gonna look like. We'll let this geyser just spill over into here and then we'll go around and pump all these extra pools into here to get it started. Until such time that we have access to steel and we can start pumping 95 seawater up there. Because as a reminder, we don't have anything that'll be able to pump beyond 75 degrees without breaking. Our other side project for the episode is complete. We now have three total gas pumps delivering all of our oxygen. And the little bit of insulation that we put in is actually helping heat this up. I still have some work to do on it though because by the time the oxygen comes out all the way up here, it's down to about 4 degrees. And that definitely would end up stifling all of our mealwoods. In fact, we probably need to insulate this now, don't we? This printing pod makes me sad. That's 12,800 calories worth of Hexlin fruit. And while we're doing okay on calories, it's still very painful to watch it disappear into the ether. So we're building a little trap door. That way when the pips are all grown up, they'll be able to travel through here and get out, in which we'll be waiting for them with open arms. Our first stone hatchling. Hey, little buddy, let's go find you a home. This stable will be all stone hatches, which unfortunately means we need to get rid of this sedimentary rock. Stone hatchlings can eat it, but I'd rather feed them something like igneous rock because I think we're gonna have a lot more of it when all is said and done. In fact, even right now, we have 180 tons of igneous rock and only 30 tons of sedimentary rock. Look at this, we got another colony achievement. I bet you this one's the critter morph one. Yep, there it is. Good egg. And one bad thing about the lice loaf, it sure is ugly, but it is nice to finally be able to plant things in our wonderful planter boxes. We just went through our first harvest. Unfortunately, we are starting to get the body temperature issues up here. Not gonna be a big deal, but we're gonna need to insulate this in sooner rather than later. But this project is gonna have to take priority because we don't have too much longer. We've already burned through about half of the polluted water. And as you can see, our primary water tank is getting really low. Remember that time when I said this printing pod was painful? Yeah, this one's more painful. We should take the hatchling eggs, right? Like, there's no question. We should take the hatchling eggs. Yeah, we're taking the hatchling eggs. Some of the purists are gonna get mad at me, 
but we can't miss out on three beautiful hatchling eggs. This could be the difference between us making carnivore and not. But I tell you what, remember this episode, and we'll see what cycle we end up getting carnivore. And if it's right up to like cycle 98 or cycle 99, well, we know that these three hatchlings saved our butts. But if we get it pretty early at maybe cycle 85 or something, then maybe we could have skipped out on these, but I'm not taking that chance. Those three new eggs are safely tucked away in our incubator bank. And because we had to add a couple more incubators, it means I had to go reset all these timer sensors. But now they're all in sequential order. So we can keep adding timer sensors without fear of them overloading our circuits. It's only been a cycle or two since we hit the surface breach, but it didn't take long at all for wonderful DK Oz to get major radiation sickness. This isn't good at all. Minus 4 to athletics, minus 50% to stamina, and minus 30% to bathroom speed. Let's go ahead and make sure no dupes are allowed back out there. Uh, well, apparently it's not just there. We need to put another layer of tiles here because we're irradiating this entire portion of our base. Oh, these shine buggies have to go too. And we have radiation vomiting. Not good. At least when it falls, it all turns into ice. All right, Lady Ruff, here's the plan. You're gonna build them really, really quick. So you too don't get radiation sickness. Oh no, DK Oz, you cannot do this stuff. How are you doing on radiation? Oh, you only have 50 rads. Oh, you're gonna be fine. So I tried using obsidian hoping that it had a higher radiation blocking, but it's the same as igneous rock at 60%. Despite that, we're still getting 59 rads per cycle on this level. Right now, it's not a big deal, but we're slowly turning this into another stable. And then it's going to end up being a big deal for the rancher in here. Just let it all out, buddy. Just let it out. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'm taking the hatching eggs again. And if it bothers you, let me know in the complaint section down below this video. Okay, we're starting to fall behind on labor. We need to get this incubator in because we have extra eggs still sitting in the ranch. But we're out of refined metals and we moved the rock crusher up here. And it's not built yet. This project is really starting to cost us. I couldn't figure out why they were still overcrowded. And I was like, oh yes, we put in the door on the tile, which means this stable is only 93 tiles instead of 96. Luckily, I caught it before it did too much damage. We needed to get DK Oz's stress down a little bit, so we put in a temporary massage table. I'd like to get it into a massage clinic, but no one's got time for that. Because we're falling so far behind on the labor, because this ranch is now full, and each one of these hatches is laying an egg every 5.88 cycles, means at least once per cycle, there's an egg I need to find an incubator for. Which means I have to make more cobalt because, well, we're almost out of aluminum. And then we got to build another incubator. Not to mention the fact I need to start building another stable. Yeah, this one only has one hatch in it, but we have a few more stone hatchling eggs on the way. And all the eggs are already in the incubators that are going to fill up this stable. Now begs the question of where am I going to put it? I mean, there's always a solution to not having enough duplicate labor. Yeah, but these dupes aren't it. I would love another rancher, and I thought about taking Max here, but they also have critter aversion, so that wouldn't work. Maybe next time. Sneaky little sage hatchling egg, making this place cramped. Now I have to have three empty incubators. To try to prevent any more sage hatchling eggs from popping up, we're doing a quick sweep to get all the dirt out. Now the reason why you see a bunch of storage unavailable symbols is because dirt right now is pretty much the only thing that we're allowing them to pick up. Some of the other ones that there is actually storage for is sedimentary rock and igneous rock in the case of the stone hatches. But we did it this way just to make sure all the little dirt pieces are truly gone. The next pod ended up having a winner. They can't do any building errands, but at least they have farming. And an interest in farming we can extend over into critter ranching. Welcome to the colony, duplicate number 10, Queen Calero. Now we wouldn't have normally taken that dupe, but the fact is we just need the duplicate labor right now. We're almost there with our water setup, but we are cutting it awfully close. Additionally, this stable already has seven hatchlings in it, so we're going to have to build another one, and I think it's going to go down in here. Now, this is all sort of cattywampus, but it's going to have to do for now. We'll end up fixing it once we finish Carnivore. We're getting closer. Unfortunately, some duplicates are going to get the sopping wet debuff. We'll keep an eye on this stress, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal because we're almost done. We started pumping this little bit of salt water, which is going to help because now that we've uncorked the cool salt slush geyser, we're going to need something to be able to mix those temps in with. 
We're also going to leave all of this debris down here because this debris will also help heat up the tank. What takes so long is these insulated tiles. Being that it's only cycle 51, all of our dupes are still horrible builders. So an 800 kilo tile times all of these tiles is a lot to ask. DK Oz is probably our best builder and they only have a skill level of 7. And that's including the fact that they have improved construction. The tank is finally complete, so we can go ahead and tie it into the separate grid that we have here. I don't love the fact that we have another grid for this, but it was far too much of an ass to keep it on this side. We're starting to get to the number of incubators where at any one time there could be two incubators powered on. Eventually we could upgrade all this two strand over to conductive wire, but quite frankly, we have more important things to do right now. Now the way this system works, the brine and the salt water comes up out of this pump here, goes into the desalinator, and then once it's desalinated, takes the long trek all the way over to, I guess this is our primary water tank? Yeah, this is something else that we'll have to clean up later. Now eventually, we'll put some automation here, so in case this thing gets too full, we can shut this liquid vent, which will allow all this to back up and stop running. Now, I'm just gonna keep moving this liquid pump around until we've gotten basically all the salt water gone. Our fourth stable is almost complete. This stable has seven critters, this one has three, and this one has eight. At cycle 52, I'd say we're right around on schedule. Fingers crossed. The goal is, by cycle 75, to have five full ranches. And from that point, we'll actually start eating the barbecue. Hopefully. Maybe. But all that's gonna have to come in another episode. I hope you had a good time watching this one, and are still enjoying the series, because we still have a long way to go. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.